Hey friends of Keycloak, this is Desnico, and in this video, I will show you an easy magic login option by implementing a custom authenticator in Keycloak so that your users don't have to remember any more passwords in the future. Grab yourself a coffee and then we'll start. Maintaining good passwords is hard. Remembering passwords even harder. What if your users wouldn't have to remember any more passwords, wouldn't have to forget any more passwords, wouldn't have to use any more passwords at all, even on your websites? This might look like this. You have your website, just enter the user's username or an email address, depends, hitting enter, and then you get a message. We sent you a login link. Simply going to your mailbox, opening the mail, which was just been sent, clicking to sign in, and you're signed in. No password, even secure as password. So how is this supposed to be that uh, a passwordless authentication by a link might be more secure or the same security as uh, authentication with a password? Well, basically, we're creating a one-time password with each email we're sending to the user's mailbox and we're moving the security from the user's knowledge to the user's uh, mailbox. Let's have a look into uh, the mail again. So this is the mail we sent, the magic link mail, and we have this uh, link click to sign in. If we switch to the plain text view of this mail, we see the link uh, with all the details. The link basically um, points to uh, the login actions uh, URL and uh, the user has to authenticate. And in this uh, mail, in this link, um, is uh, contained a query parameter like execution. It's an identifier for uh, Keycloak itself and the client ID, of course, and there's uh, another query parameter, uh, tab ID. And the tab ID and the execution together pointing the user to uh, the started uh, session, the started authentication session the user just did when uh, he entered uh, his, his username. And uh, there's another query parameter, this, that's a magic key, and the magic key is the one-time password we're basically creating on the fly when the user enters its username and before sending the email. And we're storing this magic key in the authentication session of the user. And so the authentication session and the magic key is stored together and can only be executed together. So this link can only be executed in the same browser where the authentication has been started. If an attacker has uh, access to your mailbox and copies the uh, link from your mail and tries to execute the link in another um, browser window, in its own browser window, um, the, uh, you, the, the attacker won't get access to your account because the, the link is only valid in the browser window, window where you started the um, authentication. That's the, the tab ID and uh, the execution ID. And together with the custom created magic key, which in our case is just a plain UUID, um, you get an easy authentication login for the user without the user needing to remember an, uh, any more passwords. So let's have a look into the code. The code is basically a keyclock authenticator. And as every SPI, an authenticator also consists of, of an authenticator factory and the authenticator implementation itself. So we have the authenticator factory at first. Uh, we have the provider ID, the magic link, the custom ID, and there's no more special things in this uh, factory, uh, just a display text and uh, some some metadata but that's not nothing uh, special and the whole magic of the magic login uh, happens in the magic link authenticator which is an implementation of the authenticator interface so we have the uh, authenticate method and in the authenticate method um, all the magic happens about identifying the users and the users um, magic link the magic key we're creating and uh, yeah finding um, the stored um, information. We're starting by um, looking into the authentication session, into the nodes of the authentication sessions, if we find a, a key in uh, this session. And if we find a key, then 
the magic link already has been created. That's the, the key in the session. Um, and if not, we'll create the magic link and send the magic link. That's what's happened uh, in the bottom of uh, this method. And if we find a find a session key, if the session key is not null, then we try to compare the stored um, session key with the one uh, of the, the link the page was, uh, was um, requested. And that's um, the query parameter, the magic key query parameter we put into the link. And if it fits, then the user is uh, logged in, then we call success, otherwise we call failure. And that's all what uh, we have to do. And of course, we have to send the magic link and to store the magic link. That's what uh, happens in the send magic link um, method. We're just um, creating um, a UUID in our case. The key itself we can do this through the key clock model util utils uh, helper class. And then we're storing the created magic key in the authentication session, the notes of the authentication session, which is valid throughout the whole authentication process. And um, then we're getting the email uh, template provider, being able to send an email. And um, this is here where some other magic happens with the key cloak URI builder. And we're building a URI from um, the current um, execution. So this is where the execution and the tab ID uh, query parameters came into um, the link with this um, method call get fresh execution URL from the context, from the authentication context. And uh, together with this um, execution URL and our custom magic key uh, query parameter, we get the whole link like um, we have here in our mail with the magic key, we have the tab ID, the client, and the execution query parameter. And uh, using this get refresh execution URL um, binds the link to the current started authentication session, which is only valid in the current browser. So this is why an attacker can't um, can't reuse this uh, URL to authenticate. Um, himself into a completely different browser. This is not possible with this attempt. And then well, last but not least, we're creating the mail and sending the mail to, uh, to the user itself. You can find all this code. I don't uh, want to go to this, uh, all this code in detail. You find this code, um, like all my examples in my key clock extensions demo repository on GitHub. I put the link down in the um, description of this video, of course, so we can find it there. And yeah, yeah, that's basically is it's um, you're creating a link with a custom key, storing it in the authentication session nodes, and comparing it when the user clicks on the link requesting the page if it's the same um, session, and uh, comparing the query parameter with the stored session key, and then if yes, the user is uh, authenticated. And how does this look like in the um, Keyclock authentication flow? Let's go back to the browser and go to our administration uh, UI. Just do a quick reload of the admin UI, signing in again. And then go to the authentication in the menu. And I already, of course, created the matching, magic link flow. And uh, yeah, basically it's a copy of the default browser flow, removed some stuff uh, we don't need. And we have this uh, magic link. Oh, this was not intended. Um, so again, right. Um, the magic uh, link mail um, subflow where there is a username form, no more username password form anymore. That's what the default is, but we don't want to have the, the password uh, form. We just use the, the regular username form without the password. That's uh, That one is uh, built in. And we have the magic link authenticator, which is our custom authenticator. We just created and deployed to the Keyclock server, like uh, all our um, providers, setting it to required. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. That's the, the browser flow we have to, to create. And then we have to uh, bind the flow to uh, um, the browser flow that it's been executed in uh, the 
browser when the user uh, wants to sign in. So that's um, sign in, username, you mailed your login link back to our um, mailbox, and we have the newly created magic link. Again, there's the link with another execution ID and now the tab ID, of course, and a new created magic key. And if we click on the link, a new tab will be opened in the same browser and we can log in with this link. So um, let's try to use this uh, created link in, uh, in a different browser. Um, so let's go here, the new mail, plain text, Copy, uh, copy, here it is. And then uh, let's open a new private window in the same browser, entering, executing the mail, uh, the link, and then we will see an, an error message and translate it to English. Oh, no English error, sorry. Uh, it has an error and uh, Keycloak can't find any cookie to uh, identify the session and um, yeah you can't use this link to log in into keycloak that's basically all um, the thing you have to have to do of course um, that's not the only possibility to implement a magic login link um, you can also create magic login links for execution in, in different browsers but this means uh, a bit more um, implementation a bit more uh, writing of code because you have to uh, create some some custom action tokens and create a link with these uh, action tokens um, giving a, a time frame or an expiration time to this uh, links and how often these links may be um, executed and all this stuff but that's a different use case both use cases are valid depending on your requirements and i showed you a simple option how to use a magic log link with this only which is only valid in the browser you started the authentication session of course this is not the only option how to implement a magic login link there are examples uh, available in the community where you can also create magic login links which are valid um, in in different browsers so you can um, start an, an authentication in one browser letting send you the mail to your smartphone for example and hitting the link on your smartphone and being um, authenticated on your smartphone but this depend uh, this needs a further implementation of other interfaces for example the the action token interface you have to create custom action tokens um, define some some timeouts some time to lives for these tokens and how often these tokens may be reused and all this stuff and yeah it depends on your use case what do you want to achieve do you want to have some very high secure environment where the link is only valid in the same browser where the authentication has been, you know, has been started or you want to have uh, a more convenient method how to uh, authenticate the users how they can interact with the created links this uh, depends on your use case but keep in mind if the link is valid in uh, every browser not only in the browser where you started the authentication session uh, then an attacker who has access to your uh, mails can grab the link and execute the link and may be authenticated as your user so hopefully um, you like this video and uh, if yes, give me some thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so that you don't miss any other of my future videos and hope to see you again. Bye bye.